Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com looking at a really cool little tool here today and that's one of these non-contact digital tachometers. Now basically they shoot a laser beam out at a rotating object and the light that flashes back is interpreted as an RPM value. Been wanting one of these for the workshop and RC workbench for quite some time now. You know, basically to check the rotating speed of anything in a vehicle engine bay to outdoor power equipment engines, you know, setting the idle speed up on them, uh, right down to little micro heli main and tail rotor blades. Such useful little tools. Now, I chose this uh, Unitrend or Unity model. It's uh, model number UT373. Primarily for value, it's a nice small little uh, digital tack and it's got some really nice features that others in the same price range didn't seem to have. And good accuracy, 0.04%. I've also had good uh, previous experience with most Unity products. So there's a little bit of brand loyalty there, I suppose. And for a tight ass like me, spent just under 30 bucks on it, US. So not that expensive at all. As usual, I'll product links below in the description if you wanted to uh, check the Unity UT373 digital tack out for yourself. And uh, hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better idea of how it works, how accurate it is. And uh, I'll open it up at the end if you wanted to uh, see what the build quality is like. Let's get into it. Well, let's see what we get in here. Nothing else. So there's our digital tack. Got some instructions. As you can see, they are in Chinese, which doesn't do me much good. I've already downloaded the English instructions off of Unitrend's website. I'll fire a link below in the description. Uh, I always like uh, reading the instructions before I purchase anything, of course. As you can see, the unit is quite small. Unit, unity, uh, yeah, whatever. Let's get this uh, protective film off. Always satisfying. But it is nice and small. And uh, does it come with batteries? Of course not. That was another selling feature, though, I liked with this one was it uses uh, AAAs, three of them. Uh, doesn't use 9 volts or button cells, which it seems a number of others did. And they just are harder to find, at least in my neck of the woods. AAAs are the easiest to find. And uh, let's just go over the button operation here. I'll try to hold this so this stupid lights aren't reflecting in the display. So most of these buttons have dual purpose. So we'll turn it on. It's the power button here. And as you see, it does a display check all the digits. And when you first turn it on, you can see the uh, laser is firing right now and it's giving an RPM reading. And if you hold the button in, the power button in for a couple of seconds, you'll see kind of this uh, timer icon in here. If you hold this in for a couple of seconds, that goes off and that just turns the auto power off off. Probably don't want to do that just in case you leave it turned on, that laser will drain the batteries fairly quick. Your mode, this will either be uh, just regular operation mode where it's actually doing RPM checking, but you can also recall the maximum value that it recorded and the minimum. So that's kind of cool. This RC and laser button, again, dual purpose. Uh, doesn't only check RPM, you can have it in counter mode. And I don't know how useful this will be in my applications, but it will actually count instead of giving an RPM. And you can also turn the laser off. So if you hold this button in for a couple of seconds, see the little laser icon went off, no more laser. And that's what I liked about this one, is it will read the RPM or do a count if you wanted to of anything that's emitting its own light source, either that's lit up itself or that's backlit. I'll turn the laser back on, just hold it in. There's the little laser icon again. And the hold button will just freeze the value in the display so it won't change or anything if you want time to write it down or something. And then again, dual purpose, if you hold this button in for a couple of seconds, uh, we've got a backlight on this. And that's another feature I really liked uh, with the uh, Unity 373. So that's the basic operation, very simple to use. Uh, let's find out just how accurate it is. So I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna turn the laser off. 
because we're using an external light source. So I've just got a little red LED hooked up to my function generator here. This, by the way, as you can see, is another Unity product. It's their UTG 962E function or a waveform generator. It just creates different waveforms and you can accurately uh, set frequencies. So we're just using it to flash the LED at a specific frequency to see how accurate the meter is uh, based on the uh, light that it's seeing into the sensor. And right now I've got it set to one hertz. So it's flashing once per second in one minute, 60 flashes. There's our 60 RPM. So it's reading right on the mark. However, this is flashing at 50% duty cycle, meaning that the time that the LED is on is equal to the time that it's off. And that's not really accurate to what we would be creating if we had a spinning object with a little piece of reflective tape on it. Uh, it's gonna have a very short on duration time. So I'm gonna turn that down here. I'm gonna turn it down to uh, 10%. You can see the flash is much quicker now and the on off time is longer, but we're still reading uh, 60 RPM here. And you'll see the little signal indicator lights up every time the LED flashes. But as we increase the frequency, that'll just be steady and the LED will look like it's not even flashing uh, once we get above 40 or 50 Hertz. So let's just dial up the frequency here we'll go up to 10 Hertz. And there we're reading 600 RPM, right on the mark. Accuracy is still good. Okay, let's go up to 30 Hertz, 1800 RPM, bang on. Go up to 60 Hertz, 3600 RPM, bang on. Go up to 100, 6000 RPM. The RPM run range on this is one up to 99,000. And we're gonna check that out. So let's just keep dialing this up. Let's go up to 600 Hertz. 36,000 RPM, right on the mark. Go up to one kilohertz, 60,000 RPM it should be. We're reading 59,999. So not quite up there, but certainly well within the 0.04% plus minus accuracy range, 1.6. Should be 96,000, we're at 95,999. And if we go to 1.7, we'll be over 99,000. See what happens here. Oh, we get an over limit reading. So very accurate. Let's just play with the duty cycle here, see if that changes anything. So 10% duty cycle, we'll go up to 50% duty cycle. It hunts a little bit, but then it stabilizes back at uh, 95,999, so duty cycle doesn't really seem to bother it. It will detect either a short flash or a long flash and still give a very accurate reading. So accuracy is very good as we can see. Take into account though, we've got a light source that is fixed shining right into the sensor. When you're actually using these things and you're shining a laser, it's relying on a good reflective light source coming back into it and it's only going to be as accurate and as consistent as the light coming back into the unit. Speaking of which, let's test it out on a few things. Okay, I thought we'd uh, start with a little micro heli here. Uh, this thing's got uh, white rotor blades, so we shouldn't need any of the reflective tape. This thing should read off the rotor blade fine. We're just going to have to divide the value in half because it's going to be seeing each rotor blade. We'll also check the tail. It's white as well, so uh, it'll probably reflect okay. I should mention, I've been using over the past couple of decades with my larger helicopters, one of these optical heli tacks. These things are awesome, but they're pretty much unobtainium right now. No one seems to make them anymore. This one's by Extreme Tack. Uh, and the way they work is they've got this little spinning shutter. So while you're flying, you have an assistant or a spotter looking through this little window and you, they can dial up the speed of the shutter with these two buttons and when the rotation rate of the shutter matches the rotor rpm on your helicopter you know you can be flying in the air a couple 300 feet away from 
uh, from looking through this, as long as you can see the helicopter and when the shutter speed matches the rotor RPM, it will freeze the rotor disc so it'll just look like there's two stationary blades and then it will display what your rotor RPM is in this window. Uh, limitation with these though is they only work for, you know, helicopters essentially. They don't have uh, multi-purpose like these and uh, very limited RPM range. The specific one is 1000 to 2400 RPM. So fine for larger size machines, you know, 600, 700, 800s, but uh, certainly not any good for checking the RPM of little micros, which have head speeds, you know, in the uh, 4,000 to 6,000 range on some of them. Anyway, let's uh, test this out. So I'll turn it on. And I'm gonna have to try to hold this. This probably isn't the safest, but uh, we'll see how it goes here. Freeze it. So what do we have here? 8,500, oh, let's turn the light on. Yeah, we got that backlight, let's use it. So 8,571 RPM. Uh, so divide that in half, what's that? Let's go to idle up. I have to hold it for this. Go to a higher head speed here. And what are we at? 9,742. Divide that in half. Yeah, my math is crap. Okay, let's check the tail rotor here. Get this set up. I imagine this little bugger is going to be spinning really quick. You obviously want to do this and be careful with it. Probably best I remove these blades, but... Ah, oh, jeez. Sixty-nine thousand RPM on the tail rotor. Divide it again by two. These little tail rotors are spinning quick. You know, basically thirty-five thousand RPM. Crazy. I don't know if I believe that. Let's get another heli out. Okay, I'll check out this little OMP M1. Uh, I just put some aluminum tape on the motor bell. You could also probably read the reflectiveness right off of the blade grips. Ah, we'll try that. And I've also put a little tape on the tail rotor because it's not going to pick up the black tail rotor blade. So we need something reflective on that. We'll see how it's going to work. I've just got the tail rotor disconnected now while we check the main here. So I'm just going to spool this up. Now, of course, this is unloaded. So about 4,500. It should be double if we go off of the blade grips here. Yep. Okay, let's check the tail rotor speed, how fast that little guy can get up to. That should be okay. Thirty-six thousand RPM. <laughs> That's awesome. Had no idea. I knew they turned quick. Okay, that's the tail rotor. Let's see what the head RPM is at uh, high in our idle up mode. I don't know what the govern speed is on this thing. I always wanted to check it out. Shit. Seven thousand. Thought I should quickly mention you don't always have to use the reflective tape or aluminum tape if what you're checking already has a shiny surface. So in this case, I've put a piece of black electrical tape on. Almost six K RPM out of this little starter. 
Last tachometer test of the day is on this uh, little riding mower engine. Just have a piece of the reflective tape on the fan cooling shroud. I should mention the stated working range in the manual is anywhere from 50 millimeters up to 200, so roughly 2 inches to 10 inches. Now that's totally dependent on how reflective your surface is. Ambient light, you know, if there's lots of ambient light competing with the reflected laser light, that's going to reduce the working range. In a darker area, you probably have more working range. This little badge is quite reflective, so I'm probably going to have to be fairly close, or I'm going to pick up all these little reflections as well that could register as light pulses back into the sensor. Let's turn it on. So there's our idle speed, 2100 RPM roughly. In we go. Oop. Better take the little chemical electron generators out. Just four Phillips screws. So the back just lifts off. There we go. Okay, and the three triple A's, they are in series. So this thing would be putting out four and a half volts. And then the battery power is being fed to the board through these little sprung contacts on the back of the battery tray that line up with these two pads on the board. Well, we can see right on the board there, it says laser 4.5 volts. Speaking of laser, there's the little laser diode and then the light sensor just above it there. When does this come out? This is the lens assembly. Oh yeah. Oh, there's the lens assembly. Looks like it will only fit in the one way. Yeah, that's cool. So these little notches here will only fit in the openings of the lens housing in one direction. So you can't get that put backwards. And what we got on here? I'm actually surprised to see an actual quad flat pack microcontroller. I thought it might just be a little chip on board, so that's a more expensive way to do things. What is that? Uh, come on, focus. An STM8L052. It's a little 8-bit microcontroller. Got a little oscillating crystal right uh, underneath it there. And what's this little guy here? Ooh, I can barely read the number. It looks like LM358D. Not sure what that is. I think that's an op amp. But a uh, nice looking job on all the solder connections. Nothing gross or anything. Good flow work. Let's take this uh, circuit board out. I suspect all that's on the back side is probably just the contact pads for the buttons. Firmly attached with six screws. Board's not going anywhere. So it shouldn't flex or anything, which is a common cause of cold and cracked solder joints. So we shouldn't get that problem in here. And what do we got here? Oh yeah, nothing really to it. There's our little silicone pads with the contacts on the back. And just the little plastic display screen on here. Make sure we get that in in the right orientation. Just looks like ABS plastic, nothing exceptional. You can see the screws just thread into the plastic standoffs here. There's no metal inserts or anything for them to thread into. So if you're one to keep taking things apart, uh, you'll probably strip those standoffs off. But uh, I'm sure Unity doesn't uh, expect its users to be taking the thing apart all the time. And yeah, nice big LCD display. There's the little LED backlight. That's kind of odd why those wouldn't be trimmed off. That looks kind of shoddy. So that's one fail there. Uh-oh. Oh, now we've done it. So it's just got one of those little rubber contact strips or zebra strips, whatever you want to call those. So yeah, now that I've taken it apart, we'll be able to line it back up properly.
so the right digits are lit up. Oh yeah, that's not going to be a problem. So if you take yours apart, be careful. That screen isn't held in at all. Moment of truth. Does it still work? Good stuff. So if an idiot like me can take it apart and put it back together, anyone can. So that is the Unity UT373 Mini Tack. If you're interested in one of these things, hopefully this video gives you a little more info on them. Pretty nice little units. I think they're definitely well worth the uh, money. Certainly wasn't uh, built cheaply inside. Good little rig. Hopefully it'll last many years. Thanks for watching folks. Happy tacking and we'll see you next time.